Hi everyone, this is Greg from Greg's Whiskey Guide, uh, Gregoire de Greg's Whiskey Guide, the website and the YouTube channel. As you may know, uh, I'm not only uh, loving whiskey and other spirits, but I also love music. And uh, once in a while I want to, I want to uh, do videos to uh, talk to you about my highlights of the year. Uh, a uh, particular album or a band or an artist I, I want to uh, to give credit for what they're doing uh, give them a bit exposure and this time while reaching the end of the year don't worry you will have five whiskies or so uh, for, for uh, top top whiskies of the year uh, video and you will have also 10 whiskies you should try before you die but as those require more editing than uh, the other ones, I'm still working on it. Okay, so from now we have uh, music, not muzak. Why? Because <laughs> I'm trying to uh, find things that uh, are appealing to me and, and some might be commercial in some ways, but all for me are uh, real good work and I wanted to speak to you about those 20 or so highlights of 2019 but also some being from 2018 or 17 and one exception being from 2015. Uh, this is not the entire range of what I'm hearing, to, listening to uh, all kinds of music but this is pretty much significant of the uh, kind of things I'm listening to uh, uh, over the years. Um, I will not do editing and I w initially wanted to do this in two parts, one in English, one in French and um, it's really annoying so I want th the, the, the albums I've selected for the French part to be more, ex uh, to have more exposure in English. So I will do something that's totally unprofessional, apologies for that, is that I will do the review in English and from t time to time I will put this, I will show this while I will give you some lines in French for the French audience so they can have uh, an idea of uh, what I think of the album in French. <laughs> okay, this is not going to last, I think it's a bit uh, one off, but uh, it was the crazy idea I have to avoid editing uh, for different reasons. Well, okay, so I will divide this into two parts. Uh, 10 first maybe uh, albums that are a bit more easy access let's say uh, in terms of uh, style and listening and maybe for people who are not uh, specialists less niche records let's say but there are some that are still niche or that are still uh, a bit special and in the second part I will speak to you about things that are uh, more uh, difficult maybe to listen to for some or uh, maybe uh, more underground and stuff okay so uh, number 10 of the first part this is a <laughs> black metal album um, uh, I'm not gonna talk about religion here it will be too long uh, I'm not a satanist, I don't believe in God, but I don't, so I don't believe in Satan either. But um, this is a genre in which there's some uh, interesting things can be uh, said and mostly played. I don't care much about lyrics, uh, their lyrics, it's the ambience, that, the mood that I like. So this one is from uh, Denial of God, which is um, a Denmark band denial of god with the hollow mass which is their latest album from this year and uh, for every uh, record uh, i'm advising here you will have the find the details uh, date of recording name of the album um, etc and you will have also a highlight song uh, there will be uh, you will find an excerpt as I cannot play them uh, now in the video or copyrights will uh, be very tough to uh, handle on about 20 uh, artists uh, it's a, it will be a suicide, a suicide to do that so uh, while I can't play you the music I can give you still uh, the link to the excerpt 
um, and of course I recommend you to buy these records if you like them of course so yeah the night of god it's an old band from denmark i think it, it goes back to 1991 uh, it's a trio and it's very powerful it's uh very uh there's something dark but there's something mostly uh maybe uh, joyful uh about uh, the singing uh and uh some kind of heavy metal mood mixed with black metal and I like also the, the, the guitar solos that are very unusual uh, with a lot of tremolos uh, in the upper register which is sometimes even close to a balalaika <laughs> near or close to the end of the album and it's beautifully uh, it's very melodic for some so uh, such a genre uh, so uh, yeah it's a pretty amazing record so there was Denial of God and again pour moi c'est un très bel album de black metal euh, c'est euh, slash heavy metal dirons nous presque euh, ils ne sont que trois mais ils font vraiment quelque chose de super euh, très mélodique et avec vraiment des très beaux euh, très mollo de guitare dans les solos euh, des mélodies vraiment euh, attirantes enfin attractives et euh, un travail vraiment de compo super sur des courts formats euh, en général et voilà vraiment je recommande ce disque qui est sorti cette année then we have Insomnium from Finland. Insomnium with a heart like a grave. Uh, it's a Finnish band, a band from Finland. Uh, I like what they do a lot. It's called the genre is called mellow death, uh, melodic death metal. Um, and uh, for me, it's a, it's a band that's uh, really achieved a, a formula that's unique, not necessarily very demanding. Uh, but very popular uh, and very catchy, uh, and this this one is really uh, in the in the in the mood of the best ones they they did make. So, Insomnium, uh, le nouvel album, donc Heart Like a Grave. Uh, voilà, on retrouve vraiment les les meilleurs albums du groupe avec vraiment uh, un état d'esprit uh, toujours aussi joyeux, toujours aussi enlevé au niveau des rythmiques très mélodique euh, et euh, très efficace je dirais euh, aller dans les 16 ou 18, 17 sur 20 vraiment très très bel album euh, je préfère au précédent honnêtement aux deux précédents et, et voilà donc je recommande then we go to something uh, that's completely different in the pop genre uh, ta 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 et oui blondie <laughs> blondie pollinator uh, that defend the the bees that uh, we're losing the bees now everywhere they're gonna, they're gone uh, they're killed by pollution and etc so uh, yeah blondies pollinator uh, back in in great shape i did review the album in uh, in my uh, website back in great shape considering uh, that debbie harry the lead singer is uh, the singer is uh, 70 years old now so it's when she recorded this uh, yeah this one 2000, 2017 sorry so yeah great album there's also a track uh, that I recommend that I put on the description my monster that has been written by Johnny Moore who was in the Smith in the 80s uh, very catchy uh, again lots of great tracks um, except one fun that I don't like it's really too commercial but uh, yeah most of, of the tracks are very good uh, there's also one with John Jett called Doom and Destiny or Destiny uh, so My Monster is a highlight long time Gravity uh, Too Much and Fragments so a beautiful album donc le retour de Blondie en grande forme avec Pollinator, un bel album avec de belles collaborations, soit John Jett ou Johnny Marr, ex Smith. Vraiment un album, euh, moi je, voilà, à part les, un titre, fun, oh, mauvais, le reste je trouve c'est vraiment bien fait. Peut-être un peu surproduit, c'est un peu la limite de l'exercice, euh, <coughs> mais voilà, plutôt sympa. Um, alors ensuite pour le prochain album, for the next record I don't have 
um, I don't have the CD which was not available when I uh, order a, a copy of it so I have only the the, the MP, MP3, MP4 um, you know the files uh, so yeah so I cannot show you but it's one of my favorite doom metal band which is called uh, Left Hand Solution you will have the details in the description a uh, long time running uh, Swedish band and uh, coming back with a nice album, a bit too short, 34 minutes, it's a bit of a scandal. Uh, but I like uh, I like it a lot and it's uh, I, I like the vocalist, uh, the, the singer, she's really great and she has a unique tone in the mid register. Um, and yeah, it's not very heavy doom. It has it's more gothic doom at at some moments uh, mood. But um, yeah, I'll, I like it, and I hope we'll see more of them, and hope to see them in France. Donc je parlais de Left Hand Solution et donc l'album uh, Through the Morning Wood. Yeah, sorry guys, I forgot to mention. Through the Morning Wood 2019, uh, c'est le nom de, de cet album, uh, donc, donc seulement 34 minutes, mais uh, voilà, j'aime beaucoup leur, leur doom un peu gothique, uh, avec cette, cette vraiment superbe chanteuse, uh, si je ne me trompe pas, Mariana Holberg, parce qu'il y en a eu plusieurs, uh, et avec ce, ce registre médium presque grave, uh, très particulier, uh, assez unique. Euh, voilà, de belles mélodies, c'est plutôt bien fait, un peu court, mais voilà, on espère en voir plus et les voir en France. Ok, next album, I have it. I always try to have uh, copies, um, CDs to play them uh, on something else than on the computer, uh, and also to support the artists. So it's one of my favorite, if not the, my favorite, post-rock band. It's called uh, God is an Astronaut. They are from Ireland. And uh, there are two brothers in it. And uh, they, uh, for more than 10 years, they, uh, they really play uh, hard to, to provide very atmospheric and very uh, melodic uh, instrumental, but with some... Um, so vocals effects which add a layer to the to the music that's very interesting uh, very very good album this one is called Epitaph it's from 2018 uh, go check them and again uh, have a listen to the the track I've picked I think it's it's a beautiful track donc je parlais de God is an Astronaut, un super groupe, mon groupe quasiment, je pense, préféré, on peut dire, euh, de post-rock, euh, donc irlandais en l'occurrence. Euh, voilà, ils sont là depuis longtemps et euh, j'aime beaucoup leur format, souvent 4-5 minutes, parfois davantage, mais euh, voilà, on n'est pas chez euh, d'autres groupes qui font des pièces de 20-30 minutes, pourquoi pas. Mais là, on, ils réussissent avec un format pop à faire de super mélodies très atmosphériques. Euh, assez prenante euh, avec vraiment de belles couches entre les synthés, les guitares euh, la basse et euh, le chant qui est utilisé comme un instrument euh, voilà qui n'a pas de parole mais c'est utilisé comme un instrument euh, dans des chœurs euh, assez euh, entre, qui s'entremêlent avec euh, les lignes de synthé ou de guitare et c'est vraiment superbe je, je recommande toute la discographie d'ailleurs Okay, then we're now in number five. Uh, the numbers have not really importance except for uh, the first one uh, because I love them equally. Uh, and it's just for me, it was for me to just organize my, uh, my video. Jay Maskis. Oops, hard to see this one. Jay Maskis, uh, the leader from uh, singer and uh, lead singer and lead guitarist from uh, Dinosaur Jr., one of my favorite band, classified in grunge music genre, but it goes over, it goes beyond that, in my opinion. Um, Elastic Dates from 2018, uh, beautiful, half acoustic, half electric, as usual. Uh, 
album uh, which uh, highlights the, the delicacy, the, the sense of melody, uh, you know, the, the quiet things, but also things that may be a little more sour in life, in the lyrics wise. Uh, really, I like a lot what he, what he, uh, is trying to uh, to express his generosity, his uh, feelings, and the the really uh, beautiful um, musicianship. And uh, he's a great guitarist, and also the beautiful m melodies, almost pop melodies, uh, in his solo albums. So, yeah, really recommend Jay Maskis. Donc Jay Maskis, le leader de Dinosaur Junior, ici euh, en solo quasiment, euh, guitare chant principalement, semi-acoustique, euh, euh, comme d'habitude, vraiment des mélodies superbes, euh, c'est même pas la peine d'en citer, vraiment tout est bon, comme l'album précédent, euh, comme beaucoup de ses albums solo, beaucoup de, de délicatesse, de mélodies, quelque chose de vraiment fin, euh, euh, une espèce de nostalgie, de mélancolie, euh, voilà, qui, qui lui appartient, j'adore. Voilà, voilà. Ok, now we are in uh, the world slash jazz territory, uh, mainly world, but a bit of a hint of jazz. With the two albums I really love, uh, like a lot, and two artists I discovered only this year, Um, this one, number four, is Dafer Youssef, who is from Tunisia, and it's Bird's Requiem album. Bird's Requiem mixes uh, music from uh, Northern Africa with some Indian influences as well, some other influences, and Dafer Youssef is a musician that likes to gather around him a lot of people coming from different countries. Uh, all over the Mediterranean uh, Sea, and he likes to uh, also uh, let them play their favorite instrument, whether it's its flute, it's tabla, it's uh, really open-minded world music. And in terms of the spirit, it's also something I like a lot. It's uh, Sufi uh, Islam influenced, so it's for me the highest form uh, the highest shape of uh, Islam uh, in history and in the world even if it's not the, the most uh, uh, how can I say that <laughs> it's not a political channel it has been alas uh, a lot uh, harassed and um, it's it's uh, yeah it's not a practice that's easy for them to do in this modern world unfortunately but it gives what i like really a lot it gives uh, the occasion for this singer who is also uh, uh, playing lute uh, um, arabian lute uh, it gives him the occasion to go uh, to a very high register Uh, which is very amazing and he does some uh, really um, um, difficult to say that even in in, in French uh, yeah he w he works a you have to listen to sometimes you don't know if it's the instrument the the flute and other instruments or the voice that goes the most high On, on, uh, on the register because he's trying to to go so high in spirituality that it, it go it's very atmospheric as well so uh, yeah stunning stunning work uh, birds requiem but also the the previous one so yeah I like a lot uh, what does uh, what uh, Dafer Youssef does shortly in French now euh, voilà, Dafer Youssef, euh, Burz Requiem, un album de 2018, c'est un Tunisien euh, qui euh, aime beaucoup la, mélanger euh, la world music avec quelques petits aspects de jazz, mais surtout c'est un fervent défenseur de la musique soufi, euh, pour moi la plus haute forme euh, de l'islam, et euh, pour chasser, hélas. Et euh, voilà, ça nous donne des choses qui euh, rassemblent beaucoup de musiciens de différents horizons, différents pays, 
euh, avec des instruments anciens, euh, avec du luth, euh, donc d'affaires, euh, joue du luth, euh, du oud, donc arabe, et euh, l'équivalent arabe. Et donc il chante euh, dans un registre assez, euh, assez haut et euh, un falsetto qui est assez euh, extraordinaire. Et donc euh, voilà, il y, y a des mélismes, c'est le mot que je cherchais, que je ne connais pas en anglais. Il y a des mélismes assez hallucinants euh, qui, qui parsèment ce disque comme le précédent, où on ne sait plus si c'est le, le chant ou les instruments euh, qui sont en train de faire cette, ces sublimes mélodies. Donc je recommande chaudement. T Très légèrement teinté de jazz, euh, mais surtout world, on va dire. Voilà. So yeah, this was a, a bit jazz influenced, but mostly world music. And now we're gonna see the contrary, which is fine uh, and which is fun, uh, with a, uh, an artist uh, I also discovered this year uh, by chance on the radio, and I said, what is that? It's so beautiful. And this time it's uh, Itamar Boroshov Blue Nights. Again, uh, like for Daffer, it's from uh, 2018. Um, so this uh, trumpet uh, player uh, is from Israel, but he lives now in New York, and his music is influenced by his uh, cultural background, but it is deeply uh, drowned into uh, a very melancholic jazz, modern, but also uh, digging a bit in the tradition, maybe a bit Miles Davis at moments. And uh, this also is, has some beautiful melancholy uh, mood in it, uh, especially in the in the slow songs. And really, one uh, artist I discovered this year, I'm really fond of now very much. Uh, really uh, strongly recommend uh, Itamar Boroshov. So. En français, donc Itamar Boroshov, artiste trompettiste israélien vivant euh, aux États-Unis, euh, qui mêle donc sa propre culture et un peu aussi les autres cultures du, euh, du Proche-Orient comme euh, la Méditerranée avec euh, son jazz, euh, avec parfois des, des, des côtés un peu Miles Davis. Et, mais des choses aussi plus contemporaines et vraiment il y, y, y a des mélodies très prenantes, magnifiques euh, vraiment très très chaudement recommandées j'ai découvert ça par hasard complètement cette année donc Itamar Boroshov, Blue Nights Last but not least, in fact, the first one from my first part it's the big, big, big favorite, big... Uh, big discovery of the year I, I think it's uh, these guys are really uh, will go far it's a young band that's around 25 years old only uh, f four guys and a woman who is totally unusual uh, singing in a, a very uh, quite low tone let's say low to medium tone not totally um, unlike uh, Nico from the Velvet Underground, but doing something uh, more uh, anchored in the 80s and the 90s. So yes, it's my favorite. Uh, I can say now, <laughs> the end is uh, the end of the year is uh, almost here. Uh, it's Whispering Sons, of course, and it's Image, their first album from uh, 2018. They're from Belgium. They're young. They're really talented. Uh, I saw them live uh, in Paris at Le Gibus in May and I was absolutely gobsmacked such a, uh, musicianship, uh, the professionalism, uh, the way they prepared uh, the, the sound check, everything before uh, they went really live. Uh, I also watched a lot of uh, um, concerts on YouTube uh, that people recorded, or they were officially recorded, uh, but not on, on CDs, but on uh, for some uh, broadcasts from shows. And the, their sound is always near perfection. For such a young band, and it's only their fir first album, mind you, uh, they have a beautiful EP before that and two short uh, 
uh, records uh, as well, uh, two shorter uh, uh, records, but for, it's very promising. Uh, Style-wise, uh, they're classified as post-punk, uh, influenced by Joy Division, but for me they are also anchored in the 90s. They do the link between the two, that's the strength, I think. Um, with uh, bands from the noisy pop uh, movement of our uh, genre and uh, also uh, um, dream pop and also other things and all this is detailed because I did a review about them on my website I covered also the, the concert they did in Paris uh, on my website and I also did a video especially about them that I recommend uh, you have a look. So yeah, it is, uh, so it's the first album um, and it's uh, really, I'm looking forward from the next one and it's my album of the year. Even if it's not, I'm sorry, uh, 2019, I discovered it this year. Uh, so I'm. I think they're here to stay. Uh, they're very catchy melodies. They're very, very good in what they do. Uh. Donc uh, mon album de l'année, Whispering Sounds, image. Uh, ils sont belges. Ils sont cinq, dont une chanteuse, Fenne, uh, qui a uh, vraiment une voix unique, uh, uh, relativement grave, presque comme celle de Nico du Velvet. Uh, classé post punk, mais euh, c'est sûr, il y a Joy Division, Cure, euh, etc. Euh, mais il y a aussi des groupes des années 90, euh, tendance noisy pop. Et il y a un côté shoegaze aussi, forgot to say in English. Euh, voilà, je les ai vus en concert, donc j'en parle en vidéo en anglais euh, sur ma chaîne. J'en parle aussi sur le site en français et en anglais. Euh, voilà, le, ils sont fabuleux, euh, super professionnels. Le son qu'ils ont est extraordinaire avec euh, euh, cette manière dont le synthé, avec pas mal d'effets, euh, soutient le, le, la guitare. Euh, est assez euh, unique. Euh, voilà, les mélodies sont superbes. Euh, pour moi, ils sont vraiment très très prometteurs. Un jeune groupe dont c'est seulement le premier album, mon album de l'année. There you go! Now, second part for those that uh, are interested to hear more about it. For the others, they can probably stop there, I guess. Um, yeah, so second part with uh, other bands and albums that might be maybe more a bit more difficult for some. Um, there's an album I wanted to uh, put it album of the year or second album of the year but I had to uh, complain a bit uh, about the their policy and that's why it is a number 11 in fact in my list and I'm not very happy about that uh, because it's a beautiful album it's a quite controversial uh, because it's the uh, fear inoculum album from Tool Tool is an American band and Tool is a very special band uh, that's difficult to uh, put on any uh, genre with the, it's they they are met they considered a kind of progressive metal or metal uh, alternative metal or uh, there's a perfect circle also that Menard has as a group but well, what to say, why I, did I say that in the beginning? Because uh, this album, I don't have it, a physical copy of it. I will have uh, it on a virtual uh, copy uh, very soon. But I refuse to buy something that's over 70 euros. And even if there's now a cheaper version at 40 euros. Because they wanted to do something special for their fans. A box with uh, some kind of speaker and and different things, uh, some luxury package. Uh, I didn't want to buy that. I'm not a Tool fan. I consider they have done great things in the, in the, in the past. Uh, I like uh, songs and videos like Schism, for instance. I like other, other things, but I'm not a basic Tool fan. But I think this album is beautiful and especially the, the, 
the song name Numa that was a real highlight for me of the album and uh, also showing some uh, King Crimson influences which I didn't read anywhere uh, by the way uh, and yeah and I loved also what uh, the channel YouTube channel uh, reaction and reviews uh, called Lost in Vegas Ryan and George if you see me cheers uh they did a video uh, almost 40 minutes video only about this song it was a crazy moment um yeah very interesting album i recommend but not on physical copy donc je parlais de tool et uh, fear inoculum uh, très bon album vraiment impressionnant je sais que tout le monde ne l'aime pas euh, Jean, je vous montre pas d'album euh, de pochette parce que ça coûte 70 euros dans un premier temps. Après, il y a une autre version à 40 avec beaucoup de choses. Euh, voilà, une enceinte spéciale, des dispositifs euh, en plus du disque et euh, voilà cette espèce de pousse au pousse au crime dépensier euh, de la maison de disque ou d'eux-mêmes. Je sais pas qui vraiment a décidé ça. Je refuse de rentrer là-dedans, n'étant pas un inconditionnel du groupe, même si j'aime euh, des choses qu'ils ont faites. Mais cet album est superbe, notamment le morceau de Nema. Voilà, donc rien que pour celui-là, il faut l'acheter. Voilà. Um, then, um, even uh, more demanding than ever. <laughs> no, there's a worse coming in. Um, I will speak about an, an album I shouldn't have selected because it's from 2015 uh, but it's a favorite I've discovered only uh, this year as well and beginning of the year and it's Dodheim's Guard uh, A Umbra Imago which is difficult to say uh, it's a black metal no way band which is sometimes also uh, mentioned as avant-garde experimental black metal because it's very theatrical there's something like opera uh, there's some p nice piano this you have everything uh, you need or you don't need for some in this record which is uh, really consistent and very well produced you have black metal almost death metal blast bits in it crazy and at other moments you have someone that with a crazy voice claiming like uh, Shakespeare uh, uh, you know uh, peace uh, uh, with some piano and violins and stuff uh, behind it so it goes from uh, really hard black death metal to some uh, atmospheric progressive or uh, operatic uh, music so it's very crazy there's even a saxophone in it and uh, but the way they put all this across I think it's it's pretty pretty fantastic and I listened to what they did before there are very amazing stuff as well, but I think this one is the best, the, the most uh, well produced and really recommended. So yeah, that was number 12 of the second part. So it's Dodheim's God from Norway and it's, uh, and you will find a, a, a around 30 minutes song in the description, a link to, to here. Donc je parlais uh, de de ce groupe de malades, donc Dodheimsgard, des Norvégiens qui font de l'avant-garde expérimentale black metal, euh, avec des choses qui sont presque de l'opéra, euh, un côté un peu euh, musique, euh, musical theater, euh, théâtre musical, mélangé à des blast beats d'enfer, euh, voilà, quelque chose de très très dur euh, musicalement, euh, un chant euh, possédé, mais euh, c'est plus, euh, plus marrant qu'autre chose. Et des parties très très sérieuses, et une basse sublime dans le morceau euh, que vous allez euh, écouter en, en extrait. Et euh, vraiment une maîtrise totale, c'est beaucoup moins fou que ça en a l'air en fait quand on écoute bien. J'ai découvert ça que cette année, ça date de 2015, désolé, mais je voulais en inclure là-dedans, j'aime beaucoup. Ok. Next one is a contemporary jazz uh, band that is for me one of the best I ever uh, uh, come across uh, in terms of uh, even uh, over the beyond the jazz uh, genre. Uh, for instance, um, what's the name of the album again? 
Oh, I forgot. Uh, anyway, you will find uh, um, several albums of them uh, uh, highlighted in my playlist. But there was one um, that uh, I forgot the name now, uh, which was one of my uh, that I included in my 30 uh, favorite albums uh, of all the, of all time. I think I can say that this way. Uh, there's the the song in inside of what called while we must which is a so the 10 people from let me show you it's impossible to see almost uh, so it's Jagga Jazzist it's the name of the band Jagga Jazzist it's a Norway uh, band uh, there are uh, 10 musicians yes uh, playing together uh, things that are contemporary, that close to acid jazz, close to a, a really different progressive rock at times as well. Uh, really fantastic band, very, very, very impressive in terms of uh, not only the skills but the way they compose uh, the, there's the songs. Uh, from a few minutes to a quarter uh, or more, there's I cannot say enough good of uh, this band. Jadga Jazzist Starfire is the the album. It's from 2015. Again, they don't uh, do so many albums. Uh, so Starfire uh, from Jadga Jazzist. A few minutes in French. Sorry. Jaga Jazzist, groupe norvégien de jazz contemporain, euh, très ouvert musicalement. Euh, voilà, ça va de l'acide jazz au, au, progr au rock progressif. C'est extrêmement impressionnant. C'est devenu un de mes, mes groupes favoris, même je dirais dans mon top 30. Euh, L'album dans lequel figure What We, euh, Why, What We Must, j'ai oublié le nom, désolé, euh, de l'album. Euh, C'est vraiment un album de fou, euh, voilà, un des trucs les plus déments que j'ai jamais entendus. Euh, ça plaît pas à tout le monde mais enfin, je trouve ça assez hallucinant comme travail ils sont 10, il euh, y a des guitares, il y a des saxos a... c'est super maîtrisé et c'est assez original je dois dire voilà, Jagga Jazzist à retenir then it is not uh, number 13, it is not her latest album which goes back a bit to uh, the origins and I'm not crazy about it. It's good, but I'm not crazy about it. I'm more interested in her um, recent uh, diving into half industrial, half uh, doom metal, half uh, a bit maybe sludge. We very fusion style, but dark. Is, um, dark is the main word for Chelsea Wolf and Chelsea Wolf which who's American uh, it his spoon it's the 2017 album which I think it's absolutely magnificent if I had to pick a highlight this 16 psyche uh, particle flux uh, two spirit static hum, there's many so yeah it's it's rock it's dark it's uh, it's very metal, uh, it's very moody, menacing, it's very... Uh, uh, but it's very entertaining. <laughs> you have to discover more. Donc je parlais de Chelsea Wolfe, pas son dernier, qui est un peu dé décevant par rapport à cette veine euh, un peu post-industrielle, gothique, métal, euh, mais toujours originale, euh, qu'elle avait mise en avant et que moi je trouve intéressante sur... Euh, sur l'album His Spoon que je vous recommande chaudement, Chelsea Wolf. Je sais pas pourquoi il y a toutes ces variations de lumière, j'en suis désolé. Sorry about the light variations. Number 14, and I'm not gonna do it under 40 minutes, I'm sorry. Uh, number 14 is a band which I like very, very much. Uh, I'm crazy about the singer. Uh, I don't have the album yet, uh, there were some availability problems, so I uh, can only show you um, an, an older one which is Dark Matter, Dark Matter from SPC Echo, Space Echo. Um, Dean Garcia and Rose Berlin, uh, her daughter, his daughter, uh, the singer, and Dean Garcia that does everything. <laughs> 
music, guitar, bass, uh, keyboards, uh, loops, samples of everything. Dean Garcia was the leader from another great band of the 90s I like a lot, which was Curve. So, um, it has also other experimental bands. But, uh, yeah, um, the, I recommend the album Calm from uh, SPC Echo, Space Echo, uh, which is some kind of poppy, almost trip hoppy and uh, new wave mixed and indie rock and doomy uh, uh, kind of noisy pop, everything. It's very open style and, uh, and driven by the beautiful uh, melodies of uh, that Rose Berlin, uh, Rose Berlin provides uh, to the audience. A short one in French about them. Uh, le groupe SPC Echo, Space Echo, uh, des ex-curve, uh, un ex-curve et sa fille, Rose Berlin, uh, qui, voilà, qui, c'est pas du curve, mais c'est un peu dans l'esprit de curve quand même, it's a bit like curve, uh, et c'est aussi ouvert, donc il y a tout un tas de, de choses qui se passent, ça va des choses très pop, très minimalistes, à des choses beaucoup plus... Uh, euh, sophistiqué, travaillé, avec beaucoup de, 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 euh, de couches, de guitares, euh, samplées, de, de, de synthé, euh, euh, de boîtes à rythme et tout ça. Mais c'est relativement, euh, c'est plutôt atmosphérique et planant et un peu mélancolique. Voilà, mais j'aime beaucoup et la voix est sublime, vraiment, euh, il faut écouter toute leur discographie. J'en parle sur le site. Moving on to number 16, uh, which is completely different, <laughs> and we're back into more um, hmm, chaotic uh, or uh, moving and uh, electric territories, Rivers of Nihil, which is an American death metal band, but also a bit experimental, uh, and where Holes Know My Name from 2018 is the latest album. So Rivers of Nihil uh, were doing previously uh, um, a death metal that was a bit uh, uh, traditional, but uh, we were th thinking they were going up to open the ground a bit, open, open their music to, to something more experimental, and that's what they did in uh, Where Holes Know My Name. So they uh, they added uh, weird instruments for death metal, such as saxophone. Uh, they added piano. They added other things, and that makes uh, with some amazing breaks uh, among uh, very hard work uh, and uh, yeah trigger and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, great musicianship. They're very good and very instant, interesting music uh, for those who love death metal. Again, it's the more demanding list now uh, I propose to you. Quelques mots en français. Donc, Rivers of Nihil, uh, du death uh, au départ uh, brutal et technique, et qui uh, maintenant devient plus expérimental, un peu avant-gardiste, avec uh, des instruments, uh, saxo, etc., un peu inattendu. Plus de break euh, planant et justement, ex ou alors de folie, mais avec d'autres instruments. Je trouve ça assez intéressant et euh, voilà, je recommande Rivers of Nihil. Number 17, only four to go. If you have the patience to stay uh, up there, I really thank you very much. Uh, a very underground and niche, uh, super niche band, uh, which uh, most of you will hate, probably. But I, I like what they do. They're so much inspired by uh, weird things such as uh, Lovecraft and Poe uh, uh, novels and also um, some industrial uh, themes. And um, it's Portal from Australia that uh, Phil and Salmo from Pantera like so much. So it's Iron from Portal. And it's uh, absolutely impossible to describe, except it's modern chaos uh, metal, horror metal, like they call themselves, um, 
but the, previously they were in uh, Lovecraft and Poe territory uh, for the themes, for the lyrics, for the label, for the covers, for the masks and all the weird things they wear on, on stage. Uh, they're from Australia, I don't know if I mentioned it. And uh, now they, uh, they have a sound that's less muddy, that's more um, easy to uh, understand for open-minded people, very open-minded people. If you're new to metal and you only listen to ACDC or Iron Maiden or... Uh, forget it. Just forget it. Don't listen to that. You will think it's noise, basic. So it's they have some industrial in influences probably they have some noise influences probably but for it is still experimental avant-garde death metal for me so i liked a lot swarth and the muddy very menacing and a very uh, lurking and uh, creeping music now it's more it's uh it's faster than ever but it has always been fast for many many things they do a lot of tremolo picks very hard to play uh, i've been told uh, all the time uh, very 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 fast some very interesting in this album uh, more moody and uh, uh, very weird uh, outro for instance uh, an intro and and some instrumentals uh, all is about electricity here it's uh, and then the, the cover is amazing about that. It's a gigant, it's a gigantic kind of a, you know a futuristic uh, plant, electrical plant. It's it's crazy, and the the lyrics are almost un ununderstandable. But I like the whole thing, which is for me total art. Uh, the concept of total art uh, means everything uh, from the lyrics to the cover, etc. It's something I'm very interested in. So these guys do that. Very short in French. Portal, le groupe euh, que Phil Anselmo de Pantera euh, aime tant. Euh, moi, je suis pas très fan de Pantera, honnêtement, mais euh, là-dessus, c'est pas loupé. C'est expérimental, c'est très bruyant, c'est très rapide, c'est très difficile d'accès, mais ils sont complètement dingues. Euh, mais c'est une folie organisée euh, qui n'appartient presque qu'à eux. Euh, voilà, ils sont déguisés sur scène, auparavant influencés par Paul Lovecraft, maintenant ils sont c'est un peu plus, euh, ça va vers des thèmes plus euh, futuristes, euh, un peu SF, euh, voilà, sur le pouvoir pris par euh, les ions <rire> sur cet album. Euh, la production, euh, par exemple, j'aime beaucoup Swarth, mais Swarth, c'est un album qui était très euh, boueux au niveau du son, euh, mais c'était volontaire. Là, c'est le contraire. Euh, c'est vraiment très, très... Euh, les riffs, les guitares sont acérées, tout est très clair, tout est... Euh, audible, même la basse est audible, même le chant est audible, si on peut comprendre quelque chose, euh, c'est cette espèce de jargon personnel, euh, très mystérieux toujours, mais euh, ça marche énormément, par contre c'est très difficile à écouter, il n'y a pas besoin de 40 minutes tellement c'est dense et rapide, et c'est un peu flippant même au niveau des, des ambiances et, de, et, du, et des instrumentaux, euh, mais voilà, enfin, je recommande ça quand même, pas, pas à portée euh, de toutes les oreilles, c'est clair. Uh, we're not finished, we still have some, it's gonna be my longest video, I'm sorry. Sojourner, Sojourner from New Zealand, so that's for everyone. <laughs> uh, Sojourner with the Shadowed Land, uh, the previous album, I, was, I found it so beautiful, uh, I had to fi find out what was the the next one was it as good and it seems to be uh, so it's classified as black metal but for me it's more pagan metal oriented it's more uh, viking folkloric uh, oriented uh, and it's uh, there's some flute in it so it's, it's a lot of metal but there's some flute in it there's some acoustic things there's some keyboards there's some uh, it, it's very, very uh, amazing, uh, and, and it's very interesting, and it's a journey. 
Voilà, donc je parlais de euh, Sojourner, euh, de Shadowland. Euh, donc dans la lignée du précédent, il euh, y a même... Si, y a, en plus, il y a des cœurs féminins euh, sublimes qui n'étaient pas là. Euh, voilà, c'est un peu black slash pagan metal. Euh, atmosphérique, un peu euh, viking sur les bords, mais pas tant que ça. Et je dirais, c'est euh, voilà, comme Caladan Broad, comme c'est pas Agalor non plus, mais voilà, ça, ça me paraît très intéressant et super mélodique. Et vraiment, c'est un vrai voilà, un joli voyage. Uh, forgot to mention uh, a band which is uh, not often you cannot find. Uh, most often physical copies, so that's why I forgot it, but it's on my list, I see. Mekina. Mekina uh, has embers turned to dust. It's from 2017. I'm not crazy about the latest one production-wise, but composition-wise it's beautiful. Uh, Mekina is an American band whose, uh, whose albums are almost like movies. There's Uh, starting from the covers, it's very futuristic. Uh, you know, you have sm spaceships, you have uh, soldiers in futuristic armors, and uh, and you have things about freedom, uh, th themes, songs about freedom, uh, freedom about um, about conquering worlds, etc. It's like you have a, uh, some modern uh, video game or uh, some uh, sci-fi uh, movie, but you have the soundtrack. You have uh, maybe five or six different uh, genres of music involved in this, including uh, music uh, soundtrack uh, music making. Uh, you have tons of uh, effects. Uh, voices from uh, battles. Uh, you have uh, the wind. You have uh, uh, you have the sh spaceship coming. You have everything, uh, uh, and you have a very beautiful and melodic and also chaotic at the same time uh, uh, music, which mixes death metal, progressive metal, gent metal. Uh, what else? Um, it's very difficult to to uh, to name a genre in which they could be in, and and there's clean vocals, there are harsh vocals, there are feminine, beautiful, eerie vocals, and angelic vocals, everything. But it's like a movie uh, condensed in one hour. Often it's very long. Uh, one hour uh, or more uh, album and even if it's divided into several tracks it's something you you might listen to uh, in its entirety or at least a half of it because it's it's uh, like entering into a movie you don't have the image if you watch the cover you can get in uh, and figure out maybe what's going on But uh, it's a very uh, unique journey, uh, and, and it's more impressive than the previous albums, uh, style-wise. I, I was describing more impressive in terms of mastership of uh, something that's wider than only one genre. Voilà, ça va être très difficile de résumer en français. On est déjà à plus de 50 minutes. Donc, je parlais de Mekina, euh, un groupe américain euh, un peu crossover euh, qui mélange énormément de styles, même à l'intérieur du métal, et qui sort du métal aussi. Il y a des parties presque world, euh, presque dead can dance. Euh, il y a du gent, il y a du, du, du trash, il y a du... Non, du trash, non, du heavy. Euh, il y a du power metal, il y a du... Euh, symphonique, I forgot to say symphonic, uh, space music, <laughs> uh, pff, death, uh, etc. Enfin, c'est du délire. C'est une vraie BO de film de SF. Voilà, c'est tout ce que je peux dire de plus approchant. Il faut écouter, mais qui n'a allé voir surtout l'album précédent, As Embers Turn to Dust, le dernier est moins bien produit. Two more to go, uh, so it'll be shorter maybe. Uh, Samsara, which is a doom metal band 
funeral even I can say a doom metal band from um, Slovakia uh, the album when the soul leaves the body uh, which is a bit unusual in doom metal it's it's not uh, it is very dark melancholic uh, very melodic but it less driven by the usual themes uh, that maybe we can find in the in the genre uh, and a really beautiful album and I hope they will do more in the future donc oui un groupe de Slovaquie euh, Samsara que je trouve vraiment très très intéressant euh, dans, dans un doom limite funeral doom euh, très mélodique avec une voix grave euh, terrible euh, et des mélodies à pleurer derrière à des moments euh, avec le violon qui rejoint la guitare <rire> ah, c'est pas du My Dying Bright c'est un peu c'est différent mais ça peut s'en inspirer un peu voilà. Uh, all, we're almost finished. Uh, there's another band I cannot show you uh, the cover because I haven't, uh, but I, I think I'm gonna order it soon. It's a French band. We're finishing with two French bands. <laughs> Coco Rico. Um, the first one is, uh, they're completely different bands. First one is a quite experimental avant garde. A black metal band called Blut aus Nord, which is German, uh, basically said uh, blood from the north, the sang du nord. And Blut aus Nord uh, is uh, famous in the a bit underground band, of course, is famous in, in the metal community for having pushed the boundaries towards dissonance and uh, you know. Uh, special effects in dissonance which you, you don't really know if the music goes backwards or or forward in terms of rhythm and counter rhythm that's what i meant uh, also they're known for very uh, cryptic very mysterious uh, themes and uh, whether it's the cover the relics it's not really satanic it's more esoteric i will say band and this one is, uh, is, it has a bit of controversy around it because some people thought it was more commercial, which I disagree totally. Uh, it, let's say it's more in the Memoria Vetusta series albums. And um, it's a nice album and I wouldn't have selected if there wasn't a piece in the middle, you will ha find a link in the description that was so beautiful in terms of melody and uh, musicianship, uh, stylistic, uh, the, uh, so yeah, yeah. I, I won't say more, you, you have to discover, it's very special. Donc voilà, je parlais de Bluthaus Nord, un groupe de black metal avant-gardiste français, uh, spécialiste de la dissonance. Ici on revient à des choses comme dans la série Memoria Vetusta, c'est plus mélodique, c'est toujours uh, dans l'esprit un peu norvégien, contemporain, uh, Mais c'est français, voilà, et je recommande cet album dont le morceau sublime en description, euh, voilà, que je trouve vraiment, euh, mérite à lui seul euh, de mentionner l'album. Voilà. Finishing now with something special, because I know them, so I might be a bit biased. Uh, so, uh, Faro and uh, Cyril from Hi Cowboy, which is... Um, there are two people that were previously in a band called Katleya, which I was very fond of, uh, and they were doing uh, alternative rock, French alternative rock, sung in, in French mostly, uh, while they liked to do some Cure covers on stage. Uh, the big Cure fans, the Cure. Um, it's not the Cure, it's uh, the style they're doing now is a minimalistic pop. Uh, in French, with some uh, some uh, themes about uh, you know uh, freedom, uh, uh, fr um, uh, women rights, etc. But it's not a political band. It's very minimalist, and they're trying to express what they see in life and in everyday life and turn things into uh, fun or into uh, some kind of mechanical uh, process to express what they feel. Uh, so it's very minimalistic. There's guitars, the bass, the keyboards, the samples. 
uh, loops but it's uh, very catchy and they have really their own style so I recommend the, uh, the name of the second record is uh, Cheval Metal which is horse metal that means voilà voilà et donc je termine avec High Cowboy, donc Pharaoh et Cyril, que je salue, euh, qui est un groupe euh, qui auparavant euh, avait officié dans Catleya, qui est un groupe plus important en termes de nombre de membres. Là, un, ils ne sont plus que deux, avec euh, vraiment un esprit minimaliste en français, retrouver un peu l'esprit années 80 des... des, des fameux groupe français de Cold Wave, mais avec une touche plus New Wave Pop minimaliste. Euh, voilà, des mélodies étonnantes. Euh, la berlue, j'ai mis ça en, en morceaux conseillés euh, dans la description. Mona Lisa, La Machine. Euh, voilà, un groupe euh, qu'il faut aller voir aussi euh, sur scène, c'est sympa. Et, euh, et voilà, donc un groupe attachant euh, à découvrir. Thank you so much everybody, this is my longest video ever, uh, I hope you will at least see the, 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 the first part, uh, maybe pause it and see, sorry, uh, the, the second part later on, and uh, I will put every band uh, that's on, uh, listed on this 21, in fact, um, 21 people, 21 bands, Uh, I will, you will find the list uh, and the details uh, to have a listen uh, on the description. Thank you so much for watching. I hope at least a few people will have the courage to see it. And, uh, and if they like it, please click the button like. And, uh, and I wish you a Merry Christmas. Parce que c'est la saison. Joyeuse fête. Au revoir. Bye bye.